Alex Herter is next. Alex, come on up. How we thought it would happen. Prescient visions of the future from the Victorian past. That's right. Uh, Alex is uh, in the animation business, and he's the co-owner and business director for the Duke and the Duck Productions. Go for it, my man. All right, thank you. All right, so I really thought that there'd be a lot of uh, sort of prognostications and predictions about what would happen. So I thought it would be a good idea to go back 100 years and sort of think, okay, what did we think was going to happen then in the Victorian era? And uh, so I chose the Victorian era for one reason. It sits on what I think is the border of sort of old time to what is really what I like to think of as modernity. Uh, and I think that the, the key change is that the pace of innovation has increased. I also think my slides aren't moving, but uh, <laughs> uh, the idea is that uh, back you know, in the era when the printing press was invented, when gunpowder was invented, it went from you know, a cannon-fired thing to a hand-fired thing. Uh, innovation took centuries. It took generations working, and uh, there's Queen Victoria. Um, so it took generations of people innovating, and. Once, once we hit sort of the Industrial Revolution, and especially the Victorian era in England, innovation started happening within a generation. Uh, here's the telegraph, and it went to the telephone in just 40 years, which is pretty incredible. And now we're at this point where innovation is moving so quickly that it happens every day. Uh, something is changing always. Uh, so what changed in this period? Uh, the answer to that is pretty much everything, uh, from the first rubber condom to the electric light to steam trains to automobiles, modern sewer systems. Uh, modern medicine, everything changed. And what was about to change, didn't quite change at this point, but what was about to change is our understanding of gravity. We could fly soon after this. So people were obsessed with the idea of flight. Every industrial fair from this period, the idea of flight is one of the preeminent thoughts. Here you see people are talking about flight here. There's some drawings. These are from 1900. Obviously, they, they got the, dr the drive-through right, and they got the traffic cop right, but they didn't get the, the fact that we're in cars, not in planes. Uh, here is a, a poster from an 1898 musical, The Airship, and it talked, I think this speaks volumes to how much of the public fancy caught uh, with flight. But what's really exciting is what, what they got right. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about robotics and automation, because what happened here is that people were starting to think about machines as sort of running our lives, and uh, all of us know that that's sort of what's happened. Uh, we have machines making our cars, we have machines making our buildings, we have machines autonomously vacuuming our homes, and we have machines just in every aspect of our lives. But what's also really exciting is the way that the knowledge economy has evolved, and that was also anticipated by people during this era. One of my favorite short stories of all time is by E.M. Forster, it's called The Machine Stops. And what's really exciting about it is that the protagonist, everybody in the story, actually lives their lives by video chat. Everyone lives in these little self-contained pods, and uh, they all talk to each other via this little plate. And they, what they do is they give lectures via TV. This, by the way, is an image of uh, what we thought that TV would look like. It's, here's opera being broadcast to someone else's home. Uh, and uh, what they did is they contributed lectures and ideas to sort of a Wikipedia idea. And this is over 100 years ago. Uh, another idea of what technology would do for us is automate education and uh, te technologize it. Here's a schoolmaster sort of grinding some books into people's ears. Uh, and it's, it's sort of a familiar scene, isn't it? I mean, we've all done Rosetta Stone, that sort of thing. Uh, one theme that is interesting, it's actually throughout history. The ancient Egyptians had demotic, and we have a shortened English language of a type. But basically, this is from a 1900 uh, Ladies Home Journal article about how English is going to totally change. And it has, <laughs> as you can see. And uh, all of us are doing it every day. English has changed. Uh, and other things have changed as well, uh, some of them not for the better. One thing that we think of as new is this idea that you can exercise without doing anything. But you see, when electricity was invented, they thought that too. Here's an 1890s ad from a Toronto newspaper about the electric belt that will make you fit by just wearing it. Uh, one thing that no one ever predicts is fashion. They never get it right. This is a Victorian prediction of what women would wear in the 1950s, the, 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 the non-purple one. Um, and obviously the purple one is uh, sort of our vision. I think it's actually my vision of what we're all going to look like in the future, but I'm clearly <laughs> wrong about that. Uh, one thing we can't escape about the Victorians is the steampunk movement, which obviously a lot of you are familiar with. Uh, you know, we have, this is a picture of the Tweed Ride, which a lot of people have probably been on in this room. Uh, but that aesthetic sticks with us today. 
Uh, so no matter what the future holds, and I hope that later we're going to hear about space colonies and when we're going to you know, beam across light years and all sorts of cool stuff, uh, no matter what happens, I think what we have to do is keep, uh, like the earlier speaker said, uh, damn, I forgot your name. I was all prepared to remember it. Uh, Shanali, I'm very sorry about that. Um, <laughs> What we do have to keep in mind is that humanity, that human element. So technology is really cool, but it's only really cool if we are pointing it in the right direction. And what I think is important to keep in mind is that what we think we want to happen will happen. So if we dream about awesome 3D TVs, they're going to happen. And they have. And they're going to continue. We're going to have great entertainment devices. We're going to have super smartphones. We're going to have biocomputers. We're going to have all sorts of cool stuff. But it doesn't really matter if we're not helping the smallest among us. And so what I think we need to do, <laughs> what I think we need to do is imagine a future that is good for all mankind, and that's what's going to happen. So that's what I'm excited about. So thank you. Give it up.